This video will introduce you to more of Work Manager's advanced features. You'll learn how to customize initialization and how Work Manager supports apps that span multiple processes. I'll also show you how to test a worker, and I'll introduce you to some debugging techniques. Let's go. We're in Android Studio with a Work Manager sample app, which we use to guide through this video. Let's start where it all begins, at initialization. Under the hood, Work Manager uses the Work Manager initializer provider, which is declared in the Work Runtime module and then merged into the app's Android manifest. In most cases, you don't need to configure Work Manager as it provides a reasonable default configuration. But depending on the complexity of your app, you might need to modify the standard Work Manager behavior. And this is how you do it. First, the default provider needs to be disabled. This is done by removing it from the Android manifest using the remove attribute for this node. Now you can add your own configuration in the application class by implementing configuration provider and overriding get work manager configuration. Using this builder, you can make changes to all defaults of your work manager instance. Since these have been created to work for many apps on a variety of devices, it makes sense to only adjust what you need to change for your specific use case. The threading behavior can be changed by providing a separate executor. This is super useful for testing, and we'll go over that later. There's two different executors. The task executor is used internally within Work Manager, and the executor that takes care of your workers. We also cover log levels later in this video. And you can even change the worker factory. It's responsible for helping Work Manager find your worker classes when they have to be instantiated. The worker factory enables you to change worker names and redirect and queue jobs correctly. When a worker is instantiated by Work Manager once all constraints are met, it does so using the worker's fully qualified class name. Imagine work being enqueued, but before all constraints are met and the worker would get to run, the app gets updated. The update contains the usual bug fixes and stability improvements, and also renames a worker. Without a worker factory pointing to the new class name, Work Manager could not find the worker anymore. This would result in Work Manager silently dropping jobs for this worker. And that's not something that your users are likely going to be happy about. And to avoid this problem, you'll create a custom worker factory that can handle renamed workers. This is our rename worker factory, which extends from worker factory and implements create worker. When worker class name content matches the old worker, we return an instance of new worker instead. It's important to return null for non-handle cases, as this lets the default worker factory take over. And then, in the app's configuration, I set the created worker factory to rename worker factory. In the configuration, you can also set the default process name. This is useful when working with an app that runs across multiple processes. With its 2.5 release, Work Manager introduced an artifact to improve support for these applications. Let's make image operation remote friendly. All that's needed here is calling remote work manager and using the remote work continuation. These classes provide core functionality of Work Manager and are more performant when it comes to inter-process communication and more memory efficient for multi-process apps, since they don't need to spin up a Work Manager instance for each process. Now, let's talk about testing. The samples lib module contains several workers, but no tests. So let's write some. Starting off with the cleanup worker, the class that takes care of removing temporary files. To test workers, we recommend using Work Manager's own test dependency, Work Testing. With this dependency in place, we can use test worker builders. If you want to change the threading behavior for your worker under a test, use the test worker builder. For coroutine workers, this isn't necessary, and the right builder is test listenable worker builder, which is what we'll use when testing cleanup worker. Before each test run, the cleanup worker gets initialized. Here you can create a rich configuration for your worker's needs. This is a basic worker that doesn't take input or produce output, so there is no need to configure it further. With that worker setup, we now can focus on writing the first test. Cleanup worker removes all PNGs from a directory. To test this, we create test files ending in PNG and then assert that there are no more PNGs left after the worker is done. With this scaffold, we can now add the code we want to test by calling worker do work. But do work uses coroutines and is a suspend function. One doesn't simply add the suspend keyword to the test as this is not what the test framework expects and as such would fail to compile. This is where coroutines run blocking comes in handy. Any code written in this lambda will be executed synchronously on the current thread, blocking it. 
And that's exactly what we want for a test like this one. Now the test passes. Let's move on to test a worker that doesn't use coroutines to get its work off the main thread. The base filter worker extends from worker and provides scaffolding for all filter workers in the sample. Also, since base filter worker is an abstract class that can't be instantiated directly, we create a concrete test implementation that overrides apply filter and echoes back the bitmap that was passed in. Now that it can be instantiated, let's write a test to verify the worker behaves correctly. Instead of the test listenable worker builder, we use a test worker builder. The difference between the two is that test worker builder also takes in an executor which allows tests to run with different threading policy. And we let this worker run single threaded by passing in new single thread executor. The worker in the test takes input data, so that also needs to be passed in as a work data off before calling build. Then a call to a do work will execute the worker's job. Now we can check whether the result is successful. And starting with work manager 2.6, we also can verify that the result contains the data that we are looking for by using worker's get output data. Here we're checking whether the key image URI is present in the data object with a value of type string. You can also test constraints and periodic work. Let's make the sample remove stale temporary files roughly once a day. This will be taken care of by the cleanup worker when some constraints on battery state are met. Unconstrained workers or unique jobs can be tested without the need to spin up work manager. But since a worker doesn't know anything about scheduling, we now need a work manager instance. But instead of waiting for constraints to be fulfilled, work manager provides a testing specific API. The work testing artifact provides the test init helper, which creates a work manager that executes work synchronously and a test driver, which allows changing of constraints and delays. The work manager we now get is configured for testing. Our request should be executed once a day, so a periodic work request builder of cleanup worker with an interval of 24 hours is what we're going to request from work manager. And we're also requiring the battery to be charging and not low. This means the device has been plugged in for a while. This request now can be enqueued with work manager. By calling get on the result, we're blocking the thread until the request has been enqueued. This is a big code smell in production, but in a test environment, that kind of synchronous behavior is exactly what we want. Now the work queue can be moved forward with the test driver, where we set the period delay and all constraints to be met for our given request ID. And then we check in on the work info to see whether the work is actually running. Now that we have testing under control, let's investigate how to debug when things don't work as you intended. First things first, work manager is logging at info level by default. So in the work manager configuration, let's turn logging up all the way to verbose. When running the app and executing work, we now can see what's happening by filtering logcat for the work manager prefix. There's a lot going on here. We want to see that cleanup worker removes any temporary files, then filters should be applied before the result gets saved. Now let's see if the workers are doing their jobs as intended. Firstly, there's a cleanup worker starting its work. Then it's returning a success. This is expected and intended. Then the next job is enqueued and started. This is the watercolor filter, and it returns successfully as well. Same accounts for the grayscale filter. And finally, the filtered image is saved successfully. We can even request more information through the Android debug bridge. We're using the activity manager to broadcast the action request diagnostics for the current apps package. This will yield an even more detailed debugging logs for jobs that either have completed over the past 24 hours, are currently running, or scheduled. When work runs deferred, we can take a look at system logs for job scheduler as well. This will provide rough system logs for any app using job scheduler. We're only interested in the logs for a single application, and this can be specified by adding the package name to that command. Here we can see when jobs were started and stopped, as well as whether all the constraints were met. There are more features scheduled to improve debugging for Work Manager, so stay tuned. Now that we have a nicely tested and hopefully bug free app, it's a good time to take a look at the sample and code labs linked below. Next up in this series, we'll show you how to migrate GCM Network Manager and FCM Job Dispatcher code to Work Manager. Subscribe to the Android Developers channel for more and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.